Now this may be a slightly redundant thing to say, however, electric unicycle only have a single tire. Which means that the exact nature of what that tire is like, as in its exact diameter, width, profile, or even consistency, have an outsized impact on exactly what the ride quality or the ride feel of the wheel is going to be. With one important caveat, which is that if you're just riding an electric unicycle, stiff leg, and at a low speed, let's say 10 to 20 miles per hour, you're really only going to be feeling the minimal differences between weight and size you know the word if you're just starting out even if I let you try every single electric unicycle on the market it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to pick out the one that feel the best for you since like a glass of fine wine ride feel is something that you have to extract out of an electric unicycle through skill and experiences and I can tell you that they vary from wheel to wheel greatly and that differences become especially pronounced when you push an electric unicycle to its very limit. So this week we are going to explore the whole conversation about ride feel by comparing two of the most extreme electric unicycle available on the market. On one corner you have weighting 65 pounds with a 22 inch tire, the undisputed low range king of electric unicycle, the Gotway Monster. And on the other corner, you have weighting in at 55 pounds with a unique four inch wide tire, the beast that is the 9Bot Z10. Are you ready for a matchup between two of the most extreme electric unicycle on the market? Run the intro! As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay till the end for a preview of the next episode. And I started a Patreon page. If you like what I do, help a brother out! Despite their differences, surprisingly these two wheels actually share several similarities. In terms of tire size, both of these wheels exist in their unique niche. The Monster runs a 22 inch diameter wheel that no other wheels on the market even come close. As to the 9Bot, despite the fact that there are other 18 inches wheel on the market, the fact that it is 4 inch wide, and the fact that it is tubeless, imbue it with a ride quality like no other. They're also now both of an older design. Neither have seen any significant update, except for the step up to 100 volt for the Monster. I think that was like a little bit more than a year ago even. They're also both quite rare. For the Z10 9Bot, no longer officially offer it for sale here in the US. As to the Monster, the fact that it is almost $3,000 likely discourage a lot of people from actually buying this wheel. So why should you care about these two outliers that will likely never make it onto the shortlist of electric unicycle that you may actually want to consider purchasing? Because they represent two of the most extreme variants on rye feel. You can almost imagine then on the opposite end of a scale with all the other wheel landing somewhere in the middle between these two polar opposites. Part of the reason why I want to talk about this is because of the general obsession with range acceleration and top speed, which are based on specification, easy to compare, and as a result, they're what most people tend to focus on. Now, motor performances is part of the ride feel for a wheel, and yes, everyone got their own riding style, but at least for me, my enjoyment of a wheel is rarely tied to specification. But instead, the ride feel are something that is a lot more abstract and elusive of a concept to describe. And the reason why I think ride feel has more to do with the enjoyment of riding an electric unicycle than even the performance specification. You control the wheel through body leaning and shifting your weight means that in time, once you really establish the comfort level, you bond with your electric unicycle and it really becomes an extension of yourself like no other modes of transport. And that's when subtle differences in ride quality really begin to make a huge difference. For instance, if I were to make one of your legs a quarter inch longer than the other, even though it is a very subtle difference, it is something that is going to immediately throw you off and make you miserable. And this direct connection with the wheel is behind many expert riders' resistance towards addition of a suspension system that may dampen ride feel. 
the Z10 is to ride is one of its most controversial aspects. Not only is its tire wider than anything else on the market, with its battery pack inset into the wheel hub, instead of hanging off the side like most other wheel, it also has a center of gravity much lower and closer to the center of the wheel itself. You end up with something that feels more like you're rolling around straddling a giant beach ball, especially at lower speed. Consequently, the Z10 is also one of the most maneuverable wheel I have ever ridden, despite its size and weight. I really can just entertain myself endlessly on this wheel, even at very low speed, just lean deeply to the corner, twisting and turning and trying to learn how to ride backward and doing all kind of really strange and fun tricks on it, but I do fully acknowledge the fact that it is totally an acquired taste. Since given its unusual setup, it's going to feel immediately wrong to anyone who is more accustomed riding, let's say, the Gatway, King Song, or even a motion wheel. It's going to feel unstable, strange, and it's going to totally throw it off unless they take some real time to acclimate to this wheel. Now the monster on the other hand is a dud at lower speed. It is rather top heavy, especially with the additional packs my mod wheel have. The best you can do is to simply take advantage of the wonderful seat. remain true all the way up to about 15 to 20 miles per hour, the additional weight and the significant greater distance between the motor to the contact patch means that you get less torque comparing with the MSX or the Nikola which carries the same motor but with a lot less wheels to spin. But as you push the speed towards and past 30 miles per hour, the monster begins to wake up. The delivery of torque becomes way more pronounced. The 22 inch diameter and much heavier tire generates a tremendous amount of gyroscopic force which provides a tremendous amount of stabilization at speed against any sort of roll irregularity which is very very helpful here in New York City the home of all the worst potholes in the world and honestly I have yet to encounter a single pothole large enough to shake the monster at any speed. Because of the larger air volume inside of the tire as well as the lower pressure, it contributes to a rather spongy tire feel which provides an amazing cushy ride even at speed, especially in its optimal power band of let's say 30 to 35 miles per hour. Yes, you can go faster, but uh, I'm still a little bit uh, scared. <laughs> you get this almost floaty and vague sense of gliding over surfaces regardless what the actual road condition is like. Instead, the things that really draws your attention are the rise and fall of the cadence of the motor as it vibrates between your legs. <laughs> In some sense, it actually totally remind me of what it was like to ride a motorcycle and in terms of that, I would describe the monster as a cruiser. Stable, cushy and comfortable and perfect for a long trip. But at the same time, I also have heard it being described as slightly boring. Because of the same cushy floaty feel, it really kind of almost disconnect you from the uh, sensation of riding an electric unicycle which a lot of time is a very raw and texture sensation and the monster doesn't give you that the power is there but it is long and sustained rather than the burst of torque you'll get from smaller wheels Like the Z10, at 1800 watt, it doesn't have the largest motor, but has no problem feeding you all the zippiness you can possibly ask for and pull you easily up to its 28 miles per hour top speed. Rockets up, bitch, 
I tend to ride the beeps consistently and you get the sense that the motor is nowhere close to maxed out at that speed cap but unlike the monster when it comes to ride feel instead of the motor the Z10 is really all about its unique tire being tubeless, it's one of the stiffest tires of any electric unicycle and tends to follow the road surfaces which means that when it's rough, it tends to wobble all over the place. Likely incredibly scary for someone unacclimated to this wheel and potentially dangerous if you attempt to fight it in the wrong way. My strange riding style of one leg mash against the wheel with the other as far out as possible come from riding the Z10 since you can dampen the wobble with one knee. But it isn't a fight, it's more like a negotiation since it would ultimately do as it wish and it's best for you to keep your knee loose and ride it out. But if you do, that ability to tilt easily also translates to ultimate agility even at speed coupled with an incredibly smooth and silent motor there's this sense of liquid fluidity that almost feels like you're just water flowing over whatever road surfaces that you're traveling on. Something that I had never experienced, like nothing close for any of the other wheels on the market. And surprisingly, the thing that reminds me the most of riding the Naiba Z10 strangely reminds me of whitewater rafting. There's that same sense of unpredictable wildness from floating down a crazy class three or four river but at the same time the flow can certainly be red and tank giving enough experience and yes you could get hints of what it feels like to ride the z10 from wheels with similar tire proportion and profile such as the kingston 16x or even the uh, gotway m10 but at the same time, they really pale by comparison to what it really feels like to ride the Z10. In the end, it comes down to priorities. Are you looking for more playfulness, agility, and a fun wheel? Are you looking for power and speed? Inevitably, someone always asks, if I have to choose just one, which one would I go with? And in all honesty, the answer is really neither. Since these wheels are so extreme in their own ride that they both present significant drawback. The Z10 is slow, no doubt about it. And yes, there are hacks to up its max speed, but I'm leery especially given the bad surfaces we typically deal with here in New York City. As to the monster, it is terrible precisely where the Z10 excel. It is ponderous and a pain to deal with for anything except for long distance speed sessions. And there is one final caveat, which is that electric unicycle is one of the most challenging mode of transport to master. Someone with more experience than I may very well be able to squeeze even more and do things with a wheel that I may not think is possible. But this is also precisely why I love electric unicycle as much as I do. And as a final note, I have decided to rename my vlog the Uni Vlog. Not because I love the Z10 any less, but more so because like you, I'm even more excited about what is coming next. And oh man, look at the time I somehow managed to waste another 10 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So please tell your friends and teach them how to ride and get them hooked. And finally, if you feel an overwhelming urge to give a few dollars to a complete internet stranger, link below in description for my Patreon page. Until next week, thank you. I doubt anyone would disagree that the MS Pro is the most controversial wheel release of the year. 
next week. I review the Gotway NS Pro.